Hi, and welcome to TV My Husband Hates. I'm Kat Sims. And I'm Regan Kempton. And we are reality TV addicts. Addicts, uh, aficionados. Ooh, I like that. Experts. Experts. Basically, we know our shit when it comes to reality TV. 100%. Hey everybody and welcome to another week in the life of TV My Husband Hates. I am joined by Reagan as ever. How are you? I'm good. I'm kind of excited about this being our last podcast of 2020. I know. I mean, this is my last day working and the me last too. eight weeks for me have been absolutely slack. Like I have never worked as hard as I have in the last eight weeks, which is obviously great. I'm very grateful, but yeah. I am so ready to not be creative do you know what I, I hear mean? you like yeah it's, no I it's just exhausting like I'm I'm at the point where I'm like I literally have nothing left yeah like there's no more jokes inside the body of cat sims there's no more jokes there's no more um no more humor clever, humor no really I need a, a hot minute just to like <laughs> refine my funny yeah, no, I hear you because I this is the first time since starting my business that I am being that I'm like having a cutoff period and taking a vacation for the last two weeks, like to have Christmas and, you know, be more present with my family. So this week for me has been like the week of like getting everything lined up so that everything is seamless for my clients. And that's why there are no stories this week on our Instagram page, because that, that ball right. had to be dropped. <laughs> <laughs> you could drop it. it wasn't a glass ball clients are a glass ball for sure podcast stories plastic ball you can drop that shit don't worry yeah. about it babe. so That's it happens it um and i think we'll be more on it next year but i'm ex i'm excited for 2020 to be over gotta say <laughs> i mean i am too but i think we are all holding this like false hope that oh yeah like, 2021 is going to come around and we're going to be like, woohoo! No, we're just going to wake over. up and it'll be another day. <laughs> another day. 2020 part two. At um, a certain tier or we have levels in Colorado. So it'll probably just be another day at level three. I mean, I think we're going to go into lockdown in January, but I don't want to say it because that, that's like the worst. I don't. I don't think we're going to do another. I don't think at least Colorado will do a full lockdown like we did before. I think there's a lot of, I mean, not to get too political, there's like too much backlash yeah. from people um, as far as like the lockdowns go. I don't know. I don't know what they'll do. I mean, they'll just put us on like the higher levels where like restaurants can only serve 5% of their, like two yeah. people in their building and things like that. Like they'll, they'll do it that way rather than fully locked down. Well, we're in tier three, which means that restaurants, pubs, bars, or hospitality stuff is shut. But like gyms are still open and yeah. hairdressers are still open and I get it like it's hard but I don't mind it because it means that I can justify takeaway now because like For Jimmy sure. always used to get really mad with me because he'd be like we've got loads of fucking food in the fridge like why are you spending 25 quid on a takeaway now I go because I'm supporting local businesses <laughs> that's, that's what awesome. I, I'm supporting our hospitality industry yeah Wouldn't it's really interesting some, you know it's that's my excuse for sure. It's really interesting what they're doing here, because obviously in the summer when everything was locked down, it was a lot easier because then restaurants could just like open up outside and people could sit outside. It was all fine. Well, now it's obviously snowing. So loads of restaurants have done these like plastic bubbles. So essentially you're like eating in like a, uh, a snow globe and there's oh. like heaters and blankets on the inside. So there's like this whole uh, list of which restaurants are doing that. So I think we're going to try to do that over the Christmas holidays, go eat in one of these little like plastic bubbles sitting outside oh, that's cool. there's a company that. that um uh i think it's called the little gramping company there you go that's a shout out for you um but they come and set up those little igloos in your garden that's awesome so you can for like special events have like or special occasions even though you can't go out to a restaurant you can like create this cool little thing in your garden and you know that's awesome that really cool. I um, like the creativity coming out of businesses during the pandemic. I don't like why they have to, but I think it's cool to see some business evolution going on or some creative I, ideas. I agree. Listen, the key to a successful business is solving a problem and God only knows 2020 has had its <laughs> fair share of fucking problems. So it doesn't surprise me that people are making money in 2020. That's great and good on them. Um, but I just feel for the people that are fucking fucked up the ass excuse me there's sure. no other way to put it absolutely 
Um, with our weekly COVID dissection done, <laughs> why don't we move on to what everybody's here for, which is, of course, the latest uh, from all of our reality TV shows. And first up is the return of Atlanta. First week was last week. Here we are, second week. And we finally get to meet a couple of new, well, one new peach and a friend. Yeah, for sure. So the friend is, what, Latoya? Yeah. And the peach is Miss Drew. What were your first thoughts, Reagan Kempton? I am not a fan of Toya. I appreciate that she is on the show because I think she's going to fuck some shit up and definitely says what's on her mind, but I don't particularly like her. Like, she would not be someone I would hang out with. Drew, I would hang out with for sure. Like, I think she's interesting. I think she's grounded. We'll touch on her marriage a little bit later. Yeah, we're going to come to that next. <laughs> I mean, I feel a bit the same. I feel like Latoya is fun, but she's a bitch. Like, she's like 100% For sure. that bitch. And not in a good Lizzo way. Like, in a, no. like, she's going to fucking cut you away. What was that girl last season that was super bitchy that came on and was like, you don't know me to, um, oh. do you remember who I'm talking about? Like, she went to college with, um. Oh, Eva. yeah. Let- Letitia. Mm, anyway, I know who you mean. She reminds me of her. Like, it's that same kind of energy that yeah. she brings to the table. It's a bit volatile, isn't it? It's yes. a bit like, it's like, you don't quite know whether she's just going to come at you. For no good no. goddamn reason she, at I all. I mean, she could hug you or shiv you. Yeah. 50-50 either way. <laughs> you'd never For know. Sure. You'd see, and you'd see neither of them coming. For sure. No. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Latoya's great for the show, but, like, keep her six feet 65 feet away from me and drew i'm with you like she seems sweet um you know i love kenya's different reaction to both of them like she brings latoya in like she welcomes latoya in like an old friend right it's so even weird like, like that's this, not kenya's mo so weird but then drew turns up and she's like what is cynthia doing with all these waists and strays and of course, it's because Drew's a proper actress, you know, and right. actually has a proper career. And <laughs> Kenya's just fucking annoyed about that. Yeah, yeah. But it's so obvious. I'm like, come on, like. Well, part of me is like, Kenya, you need to talk about this issue in therapy. Because I know you you have to be going to therapy to deal with this crazy shit with your husband. Please deal with this shit as well. Like, your weirdness with your girlfriends. Like, this yeah. weird jealousy. So thing. Like, get you- a hundred percent totally gets in the way of you making any real connections with other women. And that's who you need in your life right now. Yeah. I mean, she, Kenya has always been two people for me. Like there is the Kenya that I really, really like. And you see that vulnerable side to Kenya where, you know, she would, she, she's a product of her environment and the marriage that she ended up in was because of her insecurities and her need to be, accepted and not abandoned and uh and that's really sad and I can really appreciate Kenya for that and I think she's been quite open and vulnerable and honest about that but then I just see the conniving manipulative bitchy Kenya and it just just makes me sad but it's in good news I think she's decided that she is going to move forward with the next step towards divorce which is custody and I I mean it's going to be messy isn't it Yeah, I mean, thank God she's made the decision. I can't believe, like, I find it so far out of my realm of understanding that there would be someone in this relationship that is just fine with the way it is. Like, he doesn't make any moves to, like, further divorce or reconcile. Like, he's, I feel, he's totally happy with their relationship as it is right now. Like, her living in Atlanta, him being in New York, he can see the baby whenever he wants and he can treat her like shit. Well, and I think he doesn't want the hassle of getting divorced, the expense of getting divorced. I'm sure he's just shagging as many women as right. he wants to in New York. And I think it's just an avoidance of hassle and responsibility for him. He's like, fuck it, I can do what I like. Yeah. Um, and the, and she's right. She says, I'm taking my life back. And that's what she has to do. He's not going to give it back to her. She has no. to fight him for it. And I feel like she got a little bit of her fight back. You know, we titled the episode last week, You Need to Get Find Your Fight Dog. And I think she has a little bit. Making that decision seems to have instigated that energy in her. So, yeah. To be honest, even seeing her going for Drew a little bit made me a little bit happy because at least there's, like, something going on in Kenya. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a little bit of her coming back out. Yeah, exactly. So... Um, 
We'll, we'll see. Keep, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye out on that. I mean, talking of shonky marriages, though, let's discuss Drew and Ralph. Now, I was a little bit taken aback by this. I was super taken aback because I feel like Ralph is two people. Like we see him talking to Mike about how much he loves her and how excited he is about their anniversary. And then he like does this whole meal for Drew and does all this. But then like they sit down and it's like the nice part is over. I will do what I like. Just to go back to uh, the conversation with him and Mark, uh, Mike, sorry. I really appreciated that conversation. I thought it was really cool to see a kind of real conversation about yeah. how hard marriage is and about how he struggles and all of this stuff um, between two guys, you know, who I, I thought that was great, right? Yeah. I was like, this is refreshing. Um, but then the, the Ralph we got at the dining table
Okay, so let's get back into it and head over to Below Deck, which we have both been vaguely disappointed with this season. But, I mean, I would say this episode was slightly more exciting. I mean, it definitely got spicier without yeah. COVID, so maybe it's proving us wrong. <laughs> well, first of all, no big surprises or shocks here, but Shane found himself out of a job, and yet still in his, like, embarrassingly so optimistic... Success? Yeah, deemed it a success overall. Oh. Yeah, I can't even I can't even address him. Like, it wasn't a success. You lied your way onto a boat and you didn't even really try, like I know. Fuck off, dude. Um next up for maybe being fired, Paul and then poor Francesca tries to get rid of Elizabeth. But obviously it's not a great time because no. just, I mean and this is pre the actual drama that happened. So Basically, Shane goes, Elizabeth, uh, Francesca starts to obviously go, oh, well, maybe this is a great time for yeah. me to get Elizabeth fired. Captain Lee's in the firing mood. Right, Let's right. see if I can get this. Up. Captain Lee's like, look, we've already lost one. We can't lose another. Yeah. Francesca's pissed. Because um, to be fair, she has been complaining about her for kind of weeks now to him. Like, it, it's been almost the same situation as Shane was for Eddie, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I think she's slightly more competent than Eddie is, but, uh, sorry, than Shane is. Oh, for sure. Uh, I also think it's just partly a personality clash between Elizabeth and Francesca. Like, I do think Elizabeth is a little bit lame, but I think that her, whenever they try to, like, communicate about it, they just wind each other the fuck up. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I definitely think it's more of a personality thing. Um, I'm also a little more team Francesca than I am team Elizabeth on this one because yeah, I feel like too. there are a lot of times where Francesca is very clear about what needs to happen and just, like, it doesn't happen for yeah. kind of no reason. Yeah, it's really frustrating. Yeah, it's no, frustrating to watch. And I, I, think she'll, I think she'll go eventually. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. We do... Um, of course, the real drama kicks off. And I knew, I always knew it was going to be Rachel that would bring it. For right? sure. We knew that off the bat. She was going to break eventually. <laughs> so, firstly, she's drinking all day, right? Yeah, and yeah. So, like, she starts in the night out, right? Yes. And then she goes back on it when she's hungover. Right, got it. Yeah, right. so she has a massive, massive night out. She decides yeah. she just wants to get hammered. She's obviously missing her boyfriend now. I think Rachel is slightly is wired emotionally slightly differently. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, she's, I'm not saying she's batshit crazy, but I'm saying that she's, she's, she's operating got, on what I would say is slightly different frequency. Yeah. Like she is a chef. Like, let's not forget that. Yeah. Like, she is a chef. chef. She is very, very creative, very attention detailed. I don't think she's great with the emotional side of things. And yeah. I think, you know, she's got this boyfriend who loves her, understands her creativity and her specialness, and not having him, I think. Yeah, I she's think not having him. It's a little bit autistic, him. right? It's a little bit she, of the autistic thing in there. I don't know. It's like if we're on a sliding scale, there's yeah. something closer to that that I would. More on the side of attention to detail than human emotion. Yes, okay. for sure. We'll do that. Then she. So obviously, she gets drunk. And then she wakes up, she's hungover, and gets straight back on it, as far yeah. as I could tell. Yeah, no, she immediately went up to the Sky Lounge and, like, opened a bottle of champagne and started yeah. drinking. And then she gets Francesca all riled up, because she tells Francesca, yes, now's the time to go and fire Elizabeth, I support you. Then Elizabeth comes and talks to her, and Rachel just says, oh, you should probably go and talk to Captain Lee. <laughs> Francesca's like, hang on a minute, what, you just told me to go and fire her? I mean, Francesca, I'm with Francesca. At this point, everybody's tired. Everybody's hungover. She's fed up of Elizabeth's shit. Yeah. Drunk Rachel is just fucking <laughs> throwing it all over the place. Yeah. I'd be fucking overboard by now. If I, was I mean, ultimately, drunk. none of us appreciate the drunk person when you're not the one drinking. Like, let, like that's a yeah. fact. <laughs> Nobody oh, appreciates drunken antics when you are hungover and trying to get work done. <laughs> They're not so funny. No, nobody's into that. Um, I have been that person a number of times, and oh, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Um, anyway, this all culminates with the preference sheet meeting to end all preference sheet meetings. And uh, they are 
demand. Let's say demanding. I mean, it is ridiculous oh, what's on this preference That page. preference sheet is fucking crazy. Like, not even what it, they've only talked about it. I've seen it posted. And, like, some of the other stuff is, like, one of the things was, like, every time somebody wakes up, there will be a chef-created specialty on the bedside table. Like, they are batshit fucking nuts. Well, I think I want to I'll try to find it. Because I feel like we need more of this because I don't think Rachel, I mean, I think she was on the edge anyway. Yeah, yeah. And I think this tipped it. But I think it just sounded like just a long list of lots of food required. Yeah. But actually, I yeah. think it was a lot more. Like, I think that their it expectations was. were un, un, not just unreasonable, but fucking unrealistic. I mean, they think they're the Sultan of Brunei and that these people are only on the planet to live and serve while they are on this boat. Yeah, which is I'll not find it. I'll try to find it and post it so everybody can see it. But it, it's definitely more crazy than what we saw on the show. So I kind of understood her outburst a little bit better once I saw that. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, because she really did. I mean, she, she, this is why I love she Rachel. She said, eat my cooter to Captain Lee. <laughs> she said, go fuck yourself to Captain <laughs> Lee. I mean, she backtracked a little bit and was like, oh, I didn't mean you. I think she did mean him. Um, but the weird thing about was how he handled it as well. Like, he was the most calm I've ever seen that man react to somebody saying that shit to him. I, well, no, I'd rather not. But I honestly think he sees something in Rachel. Like, I think there is a self-assuredness and a, and a maturity in Rachel that yeah. he can sort of respect. She's, she's not a little kid, and he really respects her as a chef like we've heard yeah. him say she is hands down the best chef he's ever seen right so I think there's an element of respect there that allows her to kind of react oh, I don't think anybody else would really get away with it <laughs> but like I think get he's also leave? surprised yeah. like I don't think anybody has ever spoken to him that way ever on the oh. boat over the preference sheet and I think it took him off guard and so he just kind of reacted in a really, like, calm way. Like, he just didn't... I mean, it took everybody off guard. Like, <laughs> like credit where credit's due. She recognized her worth and decided that she didn't want to be treated like that. And I have to agree, like, I want yeah. to see the preference sheet because I think that makes it clearer, her reaction. Right, right, for sure. I mean, it just, it fucking blew my, my brain box. The way, like, just the things that she said, but also the way Captain Lee handled it. And she was just like, no, I'm done. I'm not doing Yeah, when this. he's like, could you just do, like, lunch and first dinner? She's like, no. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I don't think I can. No. Do you mind if I now go back? He's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I have no idea how they're going to get out of this. Captain <laughs> Lee is going to have to pull a chef out of his arse. I mean, how are they going to fix Someone's it? Someone's making pancakes. They're going to cancel the charter? I think they do, but I think for different reasons. I don't think they can't, like, just seeing the previews. I think the guests do something really fucked up. Because I, I think Captain Lee already knows these guests are going to be a huge pain in the ass. And, like, I'm here to, like, watch how big of a pain in the ass they are. But I think they do something where he's like, no, we're, we're turning around. He kicks them off the boat. I think so. And there was a lot of chatter on social media that, like, this was the first time. But I think Captain Lee canceled the charter because of drug use before first, like, first season first, first season, season first episode i think yeah they well, no. so it would be second season because he wasn't the captain the first season of below oh, deck yeah, it was there was that other weird guy. so it was like i think season two of below deck but his first season i think he turned about around so we shall see um what's going to happen with miss rachel and covid and the below deck crew but fuck this this outburst alone made me more interested in this show for sure. Oh, yeah. I was, thank God, because I was ready to suck it off. Yes. Um, let's move on to the OC, where COVID is really causing all sorts of chaos. It's fucking some shit up in California, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's really fucking up everything around the world, but... I mean, not in, not if you're Kelly. Obviously, <laughs> Kelly's like, it's not a big deal. Maybe just needs to chill the fuck out. Just be a um, little careful. Wash your hands. Everything will be fine. No problem. Um, not fine for Shane, though. No. 
know. Emily and Shane are in the world. I feel for Emily, man. Like, oh, man. she's got a husband that can't breathe. She's got three kids. She's exhausted because she's got mild COVID, but still fucking yeah. wipe you out COVID. Right. Um, and it all just feels a bit too fucking much. It's the COVID parent nightmare that you it both is. get sick and nobody's there to watch the children. Though yeah. I guess somebody had to be watching the kids because she took them to the hospital and the kids well, were... Well, I saw that. I figured that. I figured what she must have done with the kids. But then maybe that was just an emergency. Like, I have to yeah. take him to I the hospital. You're he... going to have to take the kids. Yeah, because, like, they live near his family. Like, we've seen his parents in episodes before. So part of me wonders if she was just like, I have to take him to the hospital. Someone has to come watch them. Maybe. Who knows? But, um, yeah. I mean, I think we can assume he eventually comes through. But he is really poorly. Um, Very and... fucking sick. And it's scary. Yeah, it's scary, which obviously means that Emily misses the trip to Lake Arrowhead, which looks beautiful. I love a lake. Looks gorgeous. No sharks yeah. or jellyfish in a lake. No, but really dirty water. Really dirty, like mucky water that you can't see through. It depends on the lake. I've been on, like, glacial lakes. Oh, yeah. I mean, glacier out. lakes are different, but we're talking, like, mountain lakes in fucking California. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're dirty, dark, dirty and people lake. have died there. <laughs> well, um, Anyway, they go on this Lake Arrowhead trip, which is organized by Elizabeth. House is okay. I mean, it's a beautiful location, but it looks a little bit tired. It's a bit dated. And then, a bit dated, and it's obviously infested with something. Oh, it's the poor, bug. Poor Gina. Poor Gina. The one time she gets the master bedroom, and it's fucking bug infestation 2020. Not cool. The bugs um, were self-isolating. What can you say? They were. And Bronwyn <laughs> comes. Now, here's the thing. Like, I don't know whether she's required, because she's signed up to do the show, she's required to, like, turn up to these events and these trips and things. But there is part of me that's like, Bronwyn, stop putting yourself in this situation. I, you think it's a, I think it's a little column A, a little column B. Like, I think she is obligated to do a certain amount of, like, filming with other people. I also think she's, like, I mean, I think there is a point in your sobriety, though, like, you have to go do those things. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I know yeah. it's hard, but like, you can't just hide in your house forever. You're like nice, yeah. non-alcoholic bubble. Like you do have to have normal interaction and learn how to cope and deal in those situations. Right? Like that's a lot of I mean, recovery is learning how to deal with things again. Yeah. That, but also there is an element of cutting out the people that for are sure. toxic to you. And you know, I think Kelly is incredibly toxic for her. Yeah. Kelly's just a... She's a dick. Like, she really is, on a number of occasions in this particular episode, really fucking unlikable. I mean, um, let's just talk about the amount of bottles of alcohol for, three pe for, like, three people who are drinking. I mean, you and I drink a lot, but I don't think our table has ever looked like that for a weekend of just you and I. No, we never get to, like, 12 bottles of vodka. No! Like, it's... It's insane. Yeah. Um, but also, it's like, but as I'm sure you're sort of alluding to, like, even if you were going to have a massive night, like, you've also got a, not an alcoholic there. So why overdo it? Do you know what right. I mean? You could just be a little bit more subtle, tempered, tame about it, and put still it in the get fucking cabinet. Like, but, not have it yeah. on the table. Put it away. I don't. But, I mean, I don't know. No, but she's goading. I think she's goading yeah. and testing and poking the fucking alcoholic there, and yeah. and. It's not kind. It's not. And I and Bronwyn's not in a position of strength at all. And while I don't really like anybody actually on the show right now, really, maybe yeah. apart from Gina. Yeah. Um, and Emily, I think I kind of like Emily. Oh, and Emily, yeah, I do feel for Bronwyn in the in the Bronwyn Kelly dynamic. For sure, because I mean Kel Kelly's being a dick, and she's being a dick on purpose, and it's just not. I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head, like. It's not kind. It's yeah. not supportive. It's not. It's not human. No, it's not human. You're right. And then, of course, we get Kelly politically as well. I mean, this was hilarious. She's like, Rick's daughter called him a conservative. He's not conservative. And then went on to spout fucking right. conservative shit. The conservative manifesto. Yeah. Their pledge. <laughs> I mean, is that what conservatives? Do you think these people that like believe in you know, that support Trump and all the rest of it, do you think they think I'm super conservative? Or do you think they think they're actually pretty cool? So I think in the in the camp of conservatives, you have the uber Trump supporters who don't think about anything. They just blindly follow, in my opinion. Yeah. 
then you have the other ones who who are conservatives like they're fiscal they believe in fiscal conservativeness they believe in history you know they're not evil people like they just you know feel like we shouldn't be spending a lot of money on you know domestic services and you know we should be putting more into business because it's better for the economy no i mean i think there's some conservatives that do care about people but for her to say that rick leventhal who is the anchor person of fox news is not conservative is ridiculous like you can be conservative in your politics and be a freak in the sheets as i think she was alluding to (laughs) you know what i'm saying like just because like i don't i don't know if kelly understands like just because you're conservative doesn't mean you do it missionary style you know what like yeah she's equating kelly is not that smart but like really lays into bronwyn and says you know she's not college educated she's not this that and the other yeah let's let's be real i don't think kelly was breaking any fucking records at arizona state Dude, Arizona State is a party school. Yeah, Everybody like, knows that. Let's, let's be clear about who's, yeah. who's got more intelligence here. It's definitely Bronwyn. Like, I'm right. going to be honest about it. Um, and it's not just because I agree with Bronwyn on a more of a political level either. Right, like, right. Kelly has always been pretty but dumb. I don't and know if I would it. call her dumb. Like, I don't think I would take it that far. Like, I think... Because I think she's quite smart in business. I think there's a lot of stuff we don't see on the show. I think she has she excels. smart. But I don't think she's got book smart. I, I think, think her politics cover, cover a lot of what she says. And she comes off really stupid. I mean, like, with the pandemic stuff, she definitely was being an idiot. But she was being more her political self. I feel like her politics cover a lot of what she says and doesn't let you show how smart she actually is. Or Maybe. she's a fuck. She does all this on purpose. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? I think there um, have been dumber people on the Housewives shows for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't think of any right now, but yes, for sure. Mind you, I don't yeah. think Ramona's very smart either. No, but I think she's probably, yeah. Anyways. Anyway, that's anyway. Um, so Elizabeth decides not to uh, confront Bronwyn on the whole sleuthing thing. Now, I think this sleuthing on Bronwyn's part is fucking weird. It's super fucking weird because it goes to the step of hiring a fucking private detective. It's not just yeah. like internet stalking, which let's be real, we've all done at one point in time. Maybe not to like dig up dirt on our friends because that's yeah. weird. But um, maybe to like, I don't know pseudo cyber stalk a celebrity or whatever we've all done yeah, something of course. That, right but i feel it's a real misstep for elizabeth not to confront bronwyn on this because it's fucking weird well i don't know whether it's i sort of agree i don't know whether it's a misstep or whether she just made a, like a smart choice because i don't think bronwyn would have been in like, bronwyn it's not a safe place for bronwyn so she's fucking firing on all cylinders like she's in defense mode so i right. don't think it would have been a constructive conversation. I don't know if that's the reason why Elizabeth didn't do it. I think she did yeah. it now, actually. But I do think at the end of the day, it was the right decision to not do it there. But I do think she needs to challenge her on it because like you say, that's a real invasion and violation. And even though Elizabeth hasn't always been straightforward, I think we can all agree that we've understood why. Like she's, right. yes, she should have just not fucking spoken about it if she couldn't. But she she just fudged it a bit. Yeah. Now I think we're going to get more of the story. But for Bronwyn to be going that far is crazy. It's like single white female crazy. A hundred percent. I don't think we've ever seen somebody go that in depth into somebody else's background on the show. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like Elizabeth didn't bring it up because she didn't want to like hurt Bronwyn. Like I think she feels Bronwyn's in a very vulnerable state. So she was trying to do the right thing. I just don't necessarily know if it was the right thing. Like, I think you're right. I think she does eventually need to address this because it crosses a line. And I think if, if Bronwyn was to talk about this in one of her meetings, people would be like, like, that's not sober behavior. No, no. But I think Gina really nails it when she's like, you know, the fact is I don't think Bronwyn is good at idling. Like she is, yeah. she, she is constantly on the move. Like, she always has like a slight twitch or right, right. she doesn't like sitting still. So I think maybe this was just. She needs a fidget spinner. 
or something. She needs a fidget spinner. <laughs> not, like, put down the private investigator and yeah. put the fidget spinner. Yeah, learn to cross stitch, do a craft. I mean, yeah. there, there are healthier Thanks ways cool. to channel this energy than trying to dig up shit on people you're on a show with. <laughs> Go and have a wank, babe. Like, that, that's a perfect hey. way to get rid of that energy. Yeah. Nothing like an afternoon wank to calm you right the fuck down. Absolutely. Go work out in your home gym. Do something. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, just quickly before we leave, we've got Shannon, who's homesick while her three kids, who look fine to me, uh, yeah. are also um, living at the life of Riley. So here's the thing. Why don't those girls have to be with their dad? Only one of them is like over 18. Oh, because I think because they're sick. So they can't send they can't send the girls into a non sick house. So they've left the girls to quarantine because all three of them have tested yeah. positive. So they've left them there. Shannon's moved right, out right. of the house of disease, the den of disease. And so they're just there. On their Having way. a good time. They had like the teenager version of COVID. Yeah, I mean, they're just a little the, tired. I would have preferred that version. Yeah. Um, but I, it still doesn't stop Shannon from trying to micromanage their lives. I was like, oh my God, woman, stop. Let them go. Stop. Let them fucking go. They're the I ones that got honest- themselves sick. Let them get themselves better. Like, they're not baby. They're not like babies. No, 100% these kids are old enough to manage this shit by themselves. Just put the computer down. Sit back, have some sex, drink some wine. Right? You write on the beach, like, fucking do the fun stuff. Leave the kids alone. Yeah, Shanna needs to learn how to, like, dial Let down from 11. <laughs> Let go. I mean, I'd be happy down. with a nine from Shannon, but, like, just chill the yeah. fuck out. I know, she's exhausting. Um, let's move on to Salt Lake City. And talking of, like, exhausting, let's just get this rant out of the way about Brooks the most spoiled, self-indulged kid in the world. He's not even a kid. This is one of my, like, points of issue with this show. He is 21 years old. He's not a kid. Nope. Like, stop it. A yeah. lot of 21-year-olds are out there, like, working real jobs and paying their own bills. Yeah. I know he's not, so maybe that's where the line is a little blurred, that he is acting like a baby, so we have to treat him like a baby. But if I have to hear his whiny entitlement anymore i'm gonna lose my shit me too i mean i can't agree I, I couldn't agree more he can't turn up on time he is spoiled he keeps whinging about the fact that his dad's not there never once does meredith step up and explain why his dad's not there she lets him take the fall for it like he can't come he's working when actually he can't come because you've asked for space she, she, you don't want him there i'm um, really glad you made that point because it was something that i didn't really that didn't click in my brain um, until you said it. And I was like, holy shit, like, he's just doing what she asked him to do. Like, she asked yeah. him to give her space. So, like, he's doing the best dadding he can while 100%. giving you your space. And, and for Brooks to just keep going on. And it's like my six-year-old. Yeah. Why can't you be that? You said you'd be that. Nice to, think, nice to know you take my feelings seriously. Oh, fuck off. Like, just right. go under a rock and just... It's too much. until I am you are out of my way I cannot with him I can't no no fucking I... go back to school do you know what go back to college get a fucking degree stop trying to be a fame whore on a reality tv show that your mum is contracted on <laughs> and get out of my fucking living room preach preach because and if I, I don't his mum I'd be like get your ass back to school This is the thing, because you know damn well, for her to start her own business, she had to fucking turn up shit on time and bust her motherfucking ass. It it really rankles me when I see super successful women not holding their kids to, like, have to work just as hard as they did. Like, I get give them a little bit more of, you know what you can to, like, help them get a leg up. Like, give let him design some clothes for you. Fine. But he he needs to fucking be on time to shit. Do you yeah, know what I'm Andy saying? Like, cool. like, yeah, he I, needs to work for this. Like, don't hand it to him. It wasn't handed to you. Let's all make them work. Dynamic. It's a weird dynamic it between is. them. It isn't a parent. It isn't no. a parent son relationship. It it is a bit like a, almost a bit like a boyfriend. It's like an it's equal, codependent. It's, it's codependent, codependent as fuck. And it's fucking weird. And she needs to 
put some fucking boundaries in and hold him accountable and stop babying him. God, oh, I can't. Yeah, it's the worst. He is the worst. Um, I really enjoyed, I mean, as ever, I love Heather, but I really enjoyed her chat with Whitney. I also love Whitney. She yes. is, like, stealth Goddesses. smart. Like, she's yeah. a goddess. She is. Um, and I feel for Heather, like, she's a certain age. She's looking for a guy. She doesn't want to get into the Mormon thing, but she lives in Salt Lake City. Um, it must be really tough for her. I think she's lonely. That'd be a massive fucking game drain if, like, your dating pool is a man of a certain age in Salt Lake City. Well, and also, if the bars don't even allow you to get hammered, like, how weird uh, is that? I think it's criminal to water down drinks. And you know what? We have, like, the bar that they went to is called the Punchbowl Social, and we have we have two of them here in Denver. And, like, they definitely don't water down the drinks in Denver, so... It's Just absolutely criminal. That shit crazy. Um... But yeah, I feel for her and she she's just a sweetheart and Whitney is lovely and empathetic and kind and gorgeous and all of these things that a lot of those other fucking women aren't. Um, yeah, they're great although, cousins. Although I have to say, Lisa, I, I didn't, I, I, I've got to give her props, right? I did not hate Lisa in this episode. I thought the way she handled all those fucking events at Sundance was like a motherfucking boss because that shit is not easy. No, stressful, troubleshooting, lots of fucking moving parts. All Absolutely. The same time. And I love that her husband is supportive of her in this because like she's very openly said like, I just like, I am not a mom during Sundance like that. It, that just doesn't happen. I don't take calls. I don't deal with any of that. So for me, like that leads me to believe a, like they've got, help obviously but also like he helps with that shit and i think that's cool like yeah it's very cool to support your wife being a badass and doing her thing and i'll you know i don't know i agree i i didn't hate her either i was really impressed by i'm always impressed by a woman who's fucking making their own shit happen um i do think i didn't hate her because she didn't have any interaction <laughs> with the other women and didn't have time a chance to be a cunt basically for sure I'm sure she's going to come back to form in the next couple of episodes yeah. um but sundance lisa i can get on board with absolutely i thought her events looked amazing um the one that she i wrote down the one that she did for the mcmillions documentary which is a fabulous documentary if you haven't watched it about the little like uh mcdonald's giveaways it's fabulous but like what she did with it was very fucking cool and creative and i was down with it yeah um and then we end up with jen's party part of the sundance festival as well she's obviously uh, last minute puts on a fucking show um heather gets lucky yeah good for heather and i thought lisa handled that like a boss ass friend like what you do for your single friends is you find attractive well put together people and you set them up it was jen wasn't it yeah. Did I say Lisa? I met, I met Jen. Sorry. But yeah, like it's Jen's party. She knows everybody there. She went and found an attractive put together dude and entered and was like, meet my friend, Heather. You guys have a chat. That's what everybody needs to do for their like single badass friends. And Heather's game was strong. Like, yeah. she fucking nailed that. That guy was, I don't think he was even remotely interested at first, but she fucking won him over in a heartbeat. Yep, she did. I was Personality impressed. fucking goes a long way. I'm taking some fucking notes. Not that I Absolutely. Need Personality Apparently, and like confidence. Yeah, take those notes. Apparently you don't need game when, you've got, when you're married. <laughs> uh, we also had a little cameo by oh, the uh, Utah Vanderpump girls. Katie and Lala are both from Utah. So they were at Sundance um, to, you know, name check Lala's new movie. But um I yeah. like those girls. I don't think we're going to... We, chances are we might not see them on the telly ever again, so oh. that might be it. That might yeah. be it. They need to get where they can. So. They can. And then, finally, let's move on to um, Southern Charm. Which was a little... Meh. Light this week. Light on the uh, issues. It was. I mean, I think we kicked off... It's interesting to kick off with Lever's, Lever's chat about Catherine, because I think she made some really good points about Catherine. She made some really good points about Catherine that I... I had thought of, but hadn't realized I thought of, if that makes any sense. So Leva talks about the barrage of Catherine being pretty much all up on her shit about how to not be racist. 
but then turned on her little baby girl voice to be like, oh, well, I just didn't know. And I was like, holy shit, she totally does that. And I had never really put it together, but it fucking well, I bothered think, I think she comes, listen, I'm going to be blunt. I think she comes from a long line of women who aren't, like, they're not people who make shit happen. They're not the least of, of this world. You know, they're the people who marry the right people, and they live very dainty, pleasant lives, and their only source of entertainment or fun is to perhaps just figure out to, how to get what they want out of life. And I think she just comes from a very manipulative um kind of toxic environment where she believes this is her superpower. This is how she gets yeah. stuff. And she also had to grow up really, really fast when she found herself in this awful relationship with Ravenel. And I think it's left her a little ill-equipped for real fucking life. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think, like, this is what you do in high school, right? Like, high school and middle school. Like, you yeah drop these little things about these rumors and then you go like tell the boys something else and then like you play everybody off each other and, it, and it's fun and it's entertaining when you're 12. Yeah. Not when you're a mama of two in your 20s. Yeah, late 20s, let's be clear. You know, yeah. like, she's, she's, she's too old to be behaving like that. For and, sure. And I'm pleased that Danny's seeing through this and I'm pleased that the other people are supporting Danny and kind of standing up to her because I don't think Danny would have it in her to do it by herself. Right, um, right. But I don't think Catherine is going to come out of this season well at all if she continues down the route she's, she's no. going down. I mean, Patricia is done with her once again and things are never that great when Patricia is done for you as we've seen through Catherine's life like when Patricia has not been a supporter things have not been amazing when Patricia has been a supporter she's done very well so we'll see what happens I don't um, know man. I don't know either but in, in uh, Shep on the other hand if we're talking about Catherine not growing up Shep on the other hand is really growing up thank god he is in therapy thank god and oh you know what? Thank God his therapist is a woman because I think that makes a difference to him, actually. Yeah, I agree. I 100% agree. And I think it's, I think that conversation that he has with Taylor is absolutely spot on. I, I think he had, he did the right thing. I don't think he should have been quarantining with her. Like, it's not right. about, like, let's just make out. We just don't right. know. But I, um, you know, I don't think he delivered it properly and it's lovely to see a grown-up relationship taking place for sure he could have called her like I think part of the issue was he didn't even call her or FaceTime her the two weeks she was in quarantine like he oh, just really? had nothing to do with her yeah I think that's where her issue stood and I didn't understand that last week when we were talking about it I thought she was being a bit of a baby but I feel like in this episode we hear someone be like he didn't even call like I think Craig was like he didn't even call her so like yeah, that's weird. you still have to talk to your girlfriend when she's sick like you yeah. call you check up on her like that's the thoughtful thing to do and I think that was kind of the basis of Shep was just being like super selfish and didn't keep her in mind yeah, <laughs> about how she may again. be feeling <laughs> um, but I am glad that they make it up I like these two for each other and I think it's, Me too. I think it's yeah I'm excited about this um, I love seeing a more evolved Shep. Like, I, I love do. to see that it's possible. Like, look, he's putting in the work, and it is possible to change and grow and evolve. Take notes. I mean, it shouldn't be until you're 42. No. Like, I feel like you should have pulled that out of the drawer a little bit sooner, but now yeah. it's at least it's happening. Um, talking of people, like, uh, uh, no, what's perpetual Peter Pans. God, I yep. couldn't get that out for the life no. of me. Got uh, there in the end got there in the end we've got pringle dadding i mean you gotta love this guy i mean yeah it's lovable how messed up it would be if like because i'm like okay i have two boys it's like if my partner dadded that way i would be fucking insane all the time like being the lone female voice like we have to eat fruits and vegetables we have to do our homework well like being the lone adult like, yeah, that's what's happening. And he's sure. fun dad, and that's great. Well, he can be fun dad, too, because he doesn't live with them, and it's summer vacation. So, like, the whole scenario is set up for him just to be fun dad, which is a sweet-ass position to be in. 
but eventually they've got to fucking do some reading and make their beds and like learn to not jump all over the furniture. And scream but, in people's faces. But I also love the dynamic between him and his ex-wife. He's definitely got a type. I think that we can establish that. Um, and she was really, I think she just gets him. You yeah. Know? She's like, this is the guy he is. And um, I have to roll with it. <laughs> She was like, I know how hard it is. Don't blame yourself. Like she, she recognizes that even though yeah, her yeah. system is definitely more traditional, she's still not getting it right all the time either. Right, so right. I really enjoyed that, and I think that's you know, how you co-parent I, in that I, situation. Yeah, but then there's probably it's like, all right, Pringle, you're sat there talking about how you you don't want this long distance to family thing, and but then you moved from San Diego to Charleston. Like, right, why right. not stay in San Diego if you want? Well, I think yeah. didn't he talk about it was better for him, like, like emotionally and mental health for him to like move back because he went mean, into yeah. it a little bit. And I mean, I don't know, like he's also moved closer to his family, which is obviously his support system. So, I mean, who knows? Like, he definitely made it harder moving across the country. And yeah, that is what it is. I mean, but, I don't know. I probably yeah. wouldn't. No. Move across the country away from my kids. Like I, don't, I I'm not going to judge, but if you're right, going right. to about the, the setup, yeah, you got to take. You could have made it a little the easier. The fact that you made that setup happen. For so. sure. For sure. Um, but Pringle, his his drama this week doesn't end there because, of course, the Austin Madison Pringle love triangle continues, and this is when I fucking love Pringle. Like, yeah, I Austin stood next to Pringle. He might be seven inches taller than him but he looks like a lost little boy next to Pringle yes and, and Austin is yeah and I feel for Austin because Austin a hundred percent is more in love with Madison than Madison is with him Madison knows what she wants and is very clear about it but I do take Craig's point that some of the texts that she sends oh, yeah. to Austin make it confusing for him. And I like, I mean, I didn't think I would like it until I saw it in context. I like that Craig went and had that conversation with Madison because I think somebody needs to, because Austin doesn't have the tools to do it and he will never, do you know what I'm saying? Like she yeah. thinks what she's doing is friendly. And I like that Craig was very clear. Like I know where it's coming from with you. It's coming from a friendly, good place. You're not trying to be a dick about it. But I'm going to tell you from his point of view, every one of those texts makes him think you want to get back together with him. I think you're right. And I think my initial view is like, he's yeah. not wrong. Craig's not wrong, but just stop getting fucking involved in everything. For like, sure. I, it was an element of him wanting to be the big guy again. And yeah. that just made me want to punch him in the face. But you're right when we saw it. In, I actually think he handled it really well. He struck yeah. the right tone. For sure. Um, I... Do not. I, I'm with Pringle on the bro code thing, though. Oh like, yeah, I, come on. I'm like, we cannot be in this in this place where somebody says to you, you cannot go out with. Her. Like, it's just ridiculous. I mean, let's look at statistics alone with how many girls these dudes have like slept with and been with in Charleston. That literally means nobody can move into Charleston and have any sort of relationship and be friends with you because you've and slept I, with everybody. And I get that it would take some sort of sensitivity, but if Madison and Pringle fall in love, then fuck you, Austin. I'm sorry. That's what happens. Like, and also, as an adult, I'm going to pick maybe the love of my life yeah. that I'm right for over, like, some dude friendship. Yeah. Totally. Grow up. And I mean, it, it, it was embarrassing to watch, like, when he said, I've written it down, but it was said, Madison is off limit. Like, dude. Off, and dude. Pringle's like, oh, God, I'm 43 and talking about bro code. It's so <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> And I think that's true. I mean, I loved the chat Patricia had with Austin where she's like, look, I'm all about love, but we also need to be practical. Like you're not the, you're not the dude for her. You're yeah. not a grown up. And I know you want it's to be fine. That's great, but you're not right now. And she's right. It's timing, you know, in yeah. 10 years time, maybe, but it's not now. Madison and she can't wait 10 years. She doesn't want to wait age. 10 years. She's got a fucking child. And yeah. he's got no idea what that means. He's got no idea what that means. No. He's got no idea the pressure, the responsibility, the fact that she's always, always, always going to choose that kid over any guy that walks through the door. He doesn't get the fucking grown-up shit. 
No, and he's proven it time and time again. I mean, this COVID stuff was just the last straw. Like, you didn't give a shit enough about her and her son to not go to the fucking bars and drink. You can fucking drink at home. We all do yeah, it. You, yeah, you hear him talking with Craig, and it's like, I never did anything, and da 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 Yeah. Take some resp- this is why. Yeah. Even if you took the responsibility and didn't just get defensive when she's like, you're fucked up. Right. You might still be in a relationship with her, but because you just can't get your little tiny prepubescent brain around yeah. the fucking grown up issues, you're out on your ear and you're exactly where you deserve to be. For sure. And and ultimately they're both gonna be better for it. Like yeah. she's not the person for him either. Like he needs to be with someone who doesn't need a grown up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There are those people out there. Austin, watch a show. It's called Southern Charm. And see what your behaviors do. <laughs> Just watch. No, it's so it's so crazy that they don't get it. Do you know what yeah, I mean? like, he will oh. in ten years' time when he's chef's age and he's in therapy as well. <laughs> and Madison's married to Pringle with like six gorgeous children. <laughs> right. Ouch. Oh man. Um, well, listen. With that, that brings us to the end. How was yes. it for you, Reagan? It was good for me. It was good yeah. for me. I am so like. I will miss you these next two weeks, but I am quite excited to have a little bit of a vacation. It will be a first vacation all year for me. Yeah, but I like, think that we can drinking. still like hang oh, out yeah. on Zoom with wine. For sure. We absolutely can. I, my mom sent me this beautiful um, sugar-free sparkling rosé that I had to wait forever for um, upstairs the other day. So I'll toast nice. to you with that. We can drink Perfect. and Skype and I have Zoom. I pink sparkling as well. All that we can oh, you do. That's magic, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know. Well, listen, that's us. It's now, we are like, peace out for Christmas and New Happy Year. holidays, guys. Happy, merry fucking Christmas. Yeah. Um, or Hanukkah or anything else that you've got. Whatever going. holiday you We're here celebrate, fucking have um, a good time with it. Just go have a good time. Let your kids watch the TV. Take the pressure off. Drink Eat honey, all the sugar. Yeah. Eat all the sugar. Drink all the wine just do what you fucking want we've we've earned it this year Fuck yes we have these should be the best two weeks of the year they should go forth and enjoy and we will see you in 2021 but for now thank you for joining us and remember smart people watch reality tv too bye bye Please subscribe, rate, and review TV My Husband Hates wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at TV My Husband Hates and join the Facebook group to keep the conversation going when the podcast ends. If Twitter's your thing, you'll find us at TV Husbands Hate. Theme music and production for TV My Husband Hates by Jimmy Sims.